welcome back. Today we are going to be doing some focused journaling in my planner. I have developed a bit of a spending habit since my son was born, who by the way is sleeping on my chest again, so if you hear funny noises, it's him. But I've started this spending problem because I'm up late at night, there's a lot of scrolling, I had a lot of new mom anxiety and was looking at all these products on Amazon I wanted to try and it's just kind of spiraled. I thought it'd be a good idea to sit down with you guys today and do some mindful journaling and a little manifestation work to hopefully curb this habit and reprioritize my goals. So with that, go ahead, grab your stationery and a beverage and let's sit down and do some journaling together. Now, the first thing that I want to do is I want to sit down and just write out what my goals are. So the first question that we're going to work on is, what is my long-term saving goal and what habits am I currently cultivating to get there? Now, my long-term savings goal is to buy a house for my family and I. I already have a couple thousand dollars saved up for down payment, but we live in a high cost of living area, so the more the merrier. I would love to have another $10,000 saved up for unseen expenses, repairs that might pop up in the first year, and all of the closing costs and fees that go into buying a house. Buying a house is a big deal, and I would like to be as prepared as possible so that we don't find ourselves in the hole after getting into our new home, which should be a fun, exciting experience. The habits I'm trying to cultivate is a more frugal mindset. That's why I am doing this journaling to try to curb my spending habits. Also trying to do things like cooking at home instead of eating out and repairing what we have instead of buying new are all things that I'm trying to adopt. Another habit that I would love to adopt is instead of scrolling on my phone and online shopping while I'm breastfeeding my son at night or hanging out on the couch, is to pick up a book and read and do something a bit more meaningful than just giving in to the Instagram ads. Now this next question is for a bit of a shock factor and it is add up all your impulse purchases from the past month times it by 12. How much could you have saved in a year towards your goal? This is to take a look at our spending habits and how we can reframe that mindset from scarcity and spending and losing to how much could we save instead if we had put that money into an account into our bank and tucked away instead of on these items that we might not care about. Now, after calculating my impulse purchases from the past month and times eight by 12, I could have potentially saved $5,000 this year if I changed those spending habits to savings habits. Now, that is a big deal because that is almost half of my goal towards extra house savings. So that really put into perspective why I need to be so much better about saving my money instead of spending my money. Because that little dopamine effect that you get when you put something in your cart is not the same as the long-term benefits of that thing you really, really want, which for me is a home for my family and I. I do not want to be renting for the rest of my life, so I need to make some changes. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is we are going to create our cart. So we are gonna write down the date, the item, and the price. The logic behind this is instead of impulse purchasing in the moment when you see that beautiful ad or you get that coupon code in your inbox, you're gonna write down the day and the item and you're going to wait a set amount of time before you buy it. Now, a lot of times we get tempted to buy something because we have a mindset that this deal's gonna go away, I'm not gonna be able to get this price again, but let's be honest, there's always another deal. Mother's Day just ended and I saw so many great coupon codes and discounts. And now Memorial Day is coming up and I'm getting even more emails with all these offers. So there will always be another sale. But by writing it down in this way, we give ourselves time to let that purchase sink in a little bit and possibly fade to the back of our mind. And if we revisit this page in a month and we still really want that item, then we can go back and purchase it. But I already know I have bought some things that I kind of regret because I could be saving that money. 
Now we are still human. We still sometimes need new things or just need to treat yourself. And that's okay. We shouldn't completely deprive ourselves because then there will be a slingshot effect where we just buy, buy, buy like crazy because we've been deprived of little goodies. But this just slows down those purchases so that they're not all at once and we have some time to let it sink in and see if it's something that we actually want and need. So now that this is done, I'm gonna go ahead and put this little journaling activity in the front of my planner where I've got all my other commonplace journal notes and such. And we're gonna let this sink in and think about why we make our purchases and if that money could be going towards a bigger picture item. Full disclosure, I did make some purchases, which you guys are gonna be seeing in the upcoming videos. So don't hate on me. I definitely did a little crazy treat yourself moment this week, but we are trying to turn that around and reframe our mindset to be a bit more long-term instead of that instant gratification. Now, another thing you can try if you like is I made this should I buy it spreadsheet on Canva and it's personalized to my own opinions and needs, but they have a couple different flowchart templates that you can go into and get super creative with all of your choices. But I'm really gonna quickly read to you guys what I have on mine just to give you some ideas. So we start at the top with, I want this. And I ask myself, is it a want or a need? If it's a need, like a true need, I need this for my everyday life, something is broken, something needs to be replaced, buy it, it's okay, you need it. If it's a want, ask yourself, will this drastically improve your day-to-day -day life? I'm talking, how much time are you gonna be getting back by getting this item? For example, I haven't bought it yet, but I would really like to get one of those Roomba vacuum robots so that I don't have to sweep my floor every day. We have hardwood floor in our apartment and with the cats and cat litter and dirt, it just every day we need to be sweeping. Now that's a big purchase, but something like that would get me time back in my day. So that is a yes. And then we keep coming back to this, which is, is it in your cash budget? Now that's not your credit card because we don't wanna get into those habits, but do you have cash in your account, in your wallet that you could buy that item? For me, that is a no, and that's why I have not bought a Roomba yet. But now, if it will not drastically improve your day-to-day -day life, ask yourself, how long have you researched this item? Is this something that you've looked at multiple options for? Have you explored reviews, explored the longevity of the item, or did you just see an Instagram ad and click on it? Now, if you've been researching it for over a month, I'll ask myself, is this a reusable long-term item? Is it gonna be worth my money? Am I going to have it for the long haul? Or is it just cheap, disposable, in a couple months, I'm gonna be over it? Now, if it's not reusable long-term, don't buy it. If it is, ask yourself, is it in your budget? If it's a yes, buy it. If it's a no, don't buy it. Now, going back to have you researched this, if it's been under a week, it is probably an impulse purchase. And is it being marketed towards you? Now, I love stationery, as you guys know. So I get a lot of stationery ads, a lot of stationery ads on Instagram. And I fall for them. I click on them all the time. So they know what to market to me because they know what I look at. So is it being marketed to me? Yes. And then I ask myself once again, is this actually something I need? If it's not being marketed to me and it's something that I've been looking up independently on my own or a friend has suggested to me, once again, did you research your best option? If it is a no, don't buy it. You need to research and make sure that what you're getting is worth your money, worth your time and going to last you. Because you don't wanna buy something cheap in the moment and then it's gonna break and you're out that money. Now, if you did research that option, once again, we go back to, is it reusable long-term? Is it in your budget? Should you buy it? Should you not? Now, this is just to give you guys a little idea of my thought process, and I'm gonna try very hard to keep coming back to this whenever I feel those late night impulse purchases, because I'm pretty sure if I had gone back to this flow chart, there'd be a couple less items on the way to my house right now. But at the end of the day, we are all just trying our best and don't be too hard on yourself. 
because we're human. We have impulses. We all like nice things and it's your money. So do what you want with it. But I hope this video gave you a little inspiration and some tools that you can put into your tool belt to save your money and stop the impulse purchases. I definitely am going to try my darndest to stay away from those Instagram ads, pull out my Kindle and read a good book instead of scrolling on Amazon at night. Now we still need to buy things. I might have some purchases in the future if it sits in my cart list for a while and it's a good purchase. But when we do that day in and day out, it adds up and we're going to try to avoid that. So I hope we can cultivate good habits together and move towards our goals and stop the impulse purchases that are dragging us down because I would have loved to have an extra $5,000 at the end of the year put towards the house and not towards random stuff. I hope you all liked this video. Feel free to like and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more planning and journaling activities and I will see you next time. Bye!